Well, good morning. It looks like I'm going to be a lone soldier today. Uh, we don't really have anybody on, but uh, I did have a question via email uh, that I'll go ahead and explain. Uh, my thought was, was to try to conduct a weekly Zoom conference, an opportunity for you to interact with me on a live basis, uh, to ask questions, to make sure that you understand what's going on, and uh, perhaps we need to uh, do a better job of making sure you got everything you need and how to properly log into Zoom, etc. Maybe it's not a good time, but regardless, we're going to record everything. I'll review a couple of those questions, give you a couple of announcements, and perhaps we'll have a little more participation uh, down the road. All right. First of all, a uh, couple of announcements. One, uh, if you haven't already done so, I encourage you to register for the online text. Uh, most of the material that we're going to uh, be reviewing uh, will come from that text. Second, uh, it was posted on Canvas, but all, we've ex decided to extend the deadlines for completion of the quizzes. Uh, instead of coming due by the end of today, we've extended that through the end of Sunday, uh, the Sunday preceding when the ex exams will come available on Monday. So you've got through the weekend to complete the two quizzes associated with module one, uh, basically the benefit of animals to human welfare and nutrition. Now I encourage you not to delay on that. You've got three opportunities to take the quiz. Um, about a third of you have not taken the uh, first quiz and over half of you have not taken uh, any of the quizzes related to nutrition. So I encourage you to work on that this weekend. Relative to exams, a couple of things. It's also posted as an announcement. We're not going to uh, require you to go to the testing center. We're not going to require you to have a proctor. So a number of you did. Um, if we have issues, uh, we may utilize those, but we're at least going to try to uh, not have to do that to begin with. Um, the exams for Module 1 will come available on Monday. You'll have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to take that. It's going to be a 50-question exam, uh, multiple choice, uh, randomly selected from a bank of questions uh, so that everybody basically has a different uh, exam. The other thing I would indicate to you, it's 50 questions, a maximum one-hour time frame. You only got one opportunity. So I encourage you to do some review before uh, taking that. So that's basically it for... Uh, announcements. Relative to this particular week, had one email that was submitted to me that had a question. Uh, basically said, I'm struggling with converting as fed to dry matter and dry matter to as fed when only given the TDN and percentage of water. Tried the examples in text and having a hard time solving that. So let's review dry matter conversions. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Just a second here. All righty. Get rid of that. Uh, all right. Let's talk about the expression feed composition real quick, okay? Um, basically, feeds can, the nutrient content of feeds can be expressed on one of three different bases. One is a dry matter basis, okay? That's the amount of nutrients contained only in the dry matter fraction. It means without water, okay? We then commonly may refer to the nutrient content where we may talk about things on an as-fed basis. That means it contains water, and basically is the feed as it would be fed to the animal, including the water component, okay? Now the third basis, which we don't use a whole lot with, ex with one exception, is what they may refer to as an air-dry basis, okay? It's generally assumed to be 90% dry matter, 10% water. Now the key thing that I want you to remember here is that when I give, we give you nutrient values for a labeled feed tag, the feed tag, the nutrient values that are on that feed tag express as a percentage, assume that there's 10% water in that feed. So if we would say there's 20% crude protein in this dog food, according to the label, you can automatically assume that's 20% crude protein in a feed that contains 10% water, that's 90% dry matter. 
Okay, that's the only thing I want you to really remember from here. Feed tags assume 90% dry matter, 10% water. Okay, now this particular chart happens to be up on uh, in the textbook. The illustration is the fact that this right here represents the entire feed, okay, on an as fed basis. Includes water. It's going to be heavy in weight, but the nutrients expressed on a percentage basis are going to be diluted. The waters are going to dilute the nutrients. And when I talk about nutrients, I'm excluding water from that discussion. We're simply talking protein, energy, minerals, vitamins, etc. Okay? All of those goodies on a percentage basis have been diluted with the water. Okay, if we remove the water, we have only the dry matter fraction, okay? The dry matter fraction is gonna be light in weight because we've removed the water, but the nutrients, we have not removed any protein. We have not removed any energy or TDN, total digestible nutrients. We've not removed any minerals. The nutrients on a percentage are gonna be very, very concentrated. So you're gonna have a higher percentage of nutrients, okay? That's a key thing, okay? Clear my drawing there, all right. Couple of thumb rules. Okay, when we convert as fed to dry matter, we expect a nutrient concentration to increase the weight to decrease. Why? Because we've removed water. When converting dry matter to as fed, the nutrient concentration should decrease. The weight will increase. Why? Because we simply have added water. Okay. Need to know and understand that. Okay. Now, in terms of making a dry matter conversion on a nutrient basis, Give you this, we can kind of set it up as a simultaneous equation. The percentage of nutrient, expression A, over the percentage of dry matter, expression A, is equal to the percentage of nutrient, expression B, over the percentage of dry matter, expression B, okay? Let's work this with an example, another example, and I'll kind of hand work it, okay? If silage is 40% dry matter and has 7% crude protein on an as-fed basis, what's the percentage of crude protein expressed on a dry matter basis, all right? If we set this up, and pardon my uh, ability to write with a mouse, but if we set this up as an equivalent basis, what we do is we can do this. We know that it's 7% crude protein, okay? 7% crude protein, that number right there on an as-fed basis. Well, how much moisture, or how much dry matter, excuse me, is in the feed on an as-fed basis? A silage is 40% dry matter, has 7% crude protein on an as-fed basis. It's 40% dry matter as-fed. So I've got 40% dry matter, okay? This here, all, everything on this side, was as fed, okay? That is equal to the amount of protein that we have on a dry matter basis. Do we know? No, we're gonna make that equal to X. Well, how much dry matter do we have on a dry matter basis? 100, anytime you say that something was expressed on a dry matter basis, you can automatically assume or know that means 100% dry matter, okay? Now it's simply a matter of cross multiplying, seven times 100 is 700, divided by 40, cross multiply and divide. 700 divided by 40 is equal to 17.5. That silage, has 7% crude protein on an as-fed basis with 40% dry matter. It has 17.5% crude protein 
when expressed on a dry matter basis. Now, alter there is a quicker way to do that. The quicker way is to basically just take this component right here. 7% dry matter, or excuse me, 7% crude protein, divided by the percentage of dry matter in the feed expressed as a decimal as fed. 7 divided by 0.4, that also equals 17.5% crude protein on a dry matter basis. Okay. That makes sense? Let's look at another one. Your feeds were analyzed to have 12% crude protein on a dry matter basis and contain 20% moisture. What's the as-fed crude protein percentage? Okay, in this case, let's go ahead and write this one out again. I got, write out what you know. I got 12% crude protein, okay, on a dry matter basis. Well, how much dry matter do we have on a dry matter basis? 100, so it's 12 over 100. That is equal to the amount of protein on an as-fed basis, that's X, we don't know, over how much dry matter do we have on a as-fed basis? Well, it's got 20% moisture. Some people would incorrectly write 20 here. We gotta have it the dry matter here. If it's got 20% moisture, it's got 80% dry matter. Cross, multiply, and divide. 12 times 80 is 960 divided by 100. X equals 9.6. Now, if you wanna do it the quick way, okay, I start off with 12. When I go from a dry matter basis to an as-fed basis, I'm adding water, I'm diluting nutrients. I know when I'm gonna, if I'm gonna dilute the nutrients, the percentage of protein is going to decrease. Whenever I multiply by a decimal, I will get a smaller number. I could have taken 12 times 0.8, and that two will equal 9.6% crude protein on an as-fed basis. Okay, now if we talk about weight, we don't use those equivalent equations. If I talk about weight, when I'm going as fed to dry matter, I'm going from heavy with water to light without water. Multiply by a decimal, multiply by the percentage of dry matter in the feed as fed. That'll give me a smaller number. When I go from dry matter to as fed, I'm doing just the opposite. I'm going from lightweight without water to something that has water, okay? Heavy weight, so I'm going to divide by the percentage of dry matter in the feed as fed. That'll give me a larger number. Division of a decimal gives a larger number, okay? So let's take this example. As fed, your feed has 80% dry matter. If you're to supply the cattle with 24 pounds of dry matter, how much feed needs to be put in the bunk on an as-fed basis? And this is actually something that's pretty common. Okay, The nutritionists will talk about the fact that your animal should consume so much feed on a dry matter basis. Well, from a practicality standpoint, when you go out to feed the animals, they don't just eat dry matter. They eat it as fed. They eat it with water, with moisture. Okay, so we got to recalculate to determine how much they should consume as fed. In this case, we are going, they need 24 pounds of dry matter. So we got 24 pounds of dry matter. The feed contains 80% dry matter as fed. If I divide by 0.8, division of a decimal gives me a larger number. 24 divided by 0.8 is 30. I need to put 30 pounds of feed in the bunk for each of them to actually get 24 pounds of dry matter when the feed is 80% dry matter, 20% water.
Okay. Now, a few a couple of questions, and this is a question that I like to ask. Which of the following statements is true when making conversions from as fed to dry amount? Total quantity of crude protein does not change. Percentage of crude protein will be lower on a dry matter basis. The weight will be greater on a dry matter basis. Okay. Your answer is the total quantity of crude protein does not change. Your nutrients do not change when you make a conversion. Yes, the percentage changes, but the actual quantity, grams or pounds of protein, grams or pounds of total digestible nutrients, minerals, etc., does not change. Percentage will change, but not the actual quantity, okay? Your nutritionist says your dairy cow must consume 50 pounds of dry matter. The feed contains 50% dry matter, 50% water. How much feed must they consume as fed? I'm talking about weight. See if you can work through that one. And if we were to solve that, I got 50 pounds of dry matter they gotta consume. The feed contains 50% moisture. 50 divided by 0.5 equals 100 pounds as fed. Okay, that's what we just solved. Your feeds were analyzed to have 70% TDN on an as-fed basis. It contained 25% moisture. What's the as-fed TDN value? Work through that one real quick for you. Okay. I got 70% TDN on an as-fed basis. How much dry matter do I have? Well, it's 25% moisture. It means it's 75% dry matter. This is TDN. This is dry matter. If you want to set up the equation, that's equal to X. Oops, got a little mistake in this quick question for you. Uh, scratch that out here, okay? If your feeds were analyzed to have 70% TDN on an as-fed basis to contain 25% moisture, this question should be asking, what is the dry matter percent TDN? X over 100, okay? If I cross multiply and divide, X is gonna be equal to 93.3. C should be your correct answer, okay? And it only makes sense. 70% as fed, it's got moisture in it. I wanna know what the percentage of protein is gonna be when I remove that moisture, the number is going to be larger. And that's what we just did. All right. Let's uh, escape on that. All right. <laughs> Another question she had was to explain NDF, ADF, NDF, and BFAs. Okay. First of all, ADF, NDF, and even crude fiber, okay, or CF, are actually all measurements of fiber, of the fibrous components of a feedstuff. And for our purposes, the thing that you need to know, while ADF and NDF are, they're associated with a band soast analysis, okay, it's simply a more, it's a better method of evaluating the fibrous components that tend to be lower in digestibility than anything else, okay? For our class, however, all I want you to know is one key thing. When we talk about uh, crude fiber, crude fiber, ADF, and NDF, as the amount of those things increase, the intake decreases. The digestibility decreases. The utilization decreases. So as fibrous components increase, utilization, intake, et cetera, decrease, okay? Now, she also wanted to know about VFAs. And if I can find the proper slide here, um, I will sh bring that over and kind of talk a little bit about it as well. Okay. 
okay? Talk about VFAs, okay? First of all, in terms of a ruminant animal and even that, and that of a horse, which happens to be a monogastric animal who has a functional cecum, within the cecum and within the rumen, there is a symbiotic relationship between the microbes and the animal. From the microbial standpoint, they use dietary energy. They use carbohydrates and proteins, nitrogen, that are coming in for their own growth. They excrete what are known as VFAs, and those are a waste product, okay? Now, if those VFAs were allowed to remain inside that organ, they would soon become toxic to the microbes and kill them off, okay? The animal is able to die, later on digest the microbes and will retrieve the protein and vitamins, particularly for the ruminant, okay? And then those VFAs, it would have been toxic to the microbes as they were living. And there are three primary acid, uh, VFAs, acetate, butyrate, and propionate. Acetate comes from the bacteria that function to digest forages. Propionate is one that is generated from bacteria that function to digest predominantly starch. Regardless, those VFAs are absorbed directly across the ruminal wall, and they actually serve as an energy source for the animal. Now, pretty much all of our nutrients are absorbed in the small intestine. The one exception, at least, that for which we can get energy is the VFAs. They're the only thing that's absorbed someplace else. They're absorbed across the ruminal wall in a ruminant animal, such as a cow or a sheep or a goat. They're absorbed across the cecal wall for a horse. Okay? And that's really all I want to kind of say about volatile fatty acids. They're a waste product, but they are used as an energy source for the cow, as an energy source for the horse. Okay. So with that, um, that is basically uh, kind of what we've got involved. Um, obviously, if you have other questions, feel free to uh, email me. Perhaps we could uh, develop a discussion board and if you have questions post that and I can we can respond with some answers so that everybody can see that so I hope this has been beneficial and uh, maybe we'll be able to do it again down the road uh, with everybody please enjoy and I'm trying to uh, unshare things and we will uh, see you next week thank you much and have a good good weekend